like its semifinal game in which it scored the first eight points of each half. Duke found the early going tough against UNLV. But at the other end of the court, it was a different story. Greg Anthony hit the Rebels' first jumper of the game. And after another Duke miss, UNLV was off and running. Butler beats him to it, and it's a three on two for Vegas. Here's a bounce in low to Johnson. He puts it in. Right from the start, it was clear that Larry Johnson would be able to establish position inside. And for Duke, that meant trouble, as UNLV took an early 7-2 lead. The Devils hoped they could get inside, too. And for a time, they did. First, Christian Leitner found Ala Abdelnabi. And then Leitner hit Robert Bricky as Duke closed within a point at 7-6. For the first three minutes, Duke had played UNLV even, but all of that was about to change. With a 10-footer, got it. Anderson Hunt started a scoring binge that would ignite the Rebel attack. At first, Hunt began his assault from outside, but after a while, there was no stopping him from anywhere. Worse still, the normally sure-handed Devils were having trouble handling the basketball. In the first 10 minutes, they turned it over 10 times. For Duke, this stretch was a nightmare. Nothing it did seemed to go Duke's way. While on the other end of the court, the Rebels could do no wrong. Led by their suffocating amoeba defense, UNLV completely took Duke out of its game, outscoring the Blue Devils 21-9. Hunt fakes and drives. Baseline eight-footer in the air. Good. Young comes out, takes it in backcourt. He drives down, puts up a little hook shot. Got it. Left corner. Young puts it up and in for three. And that's what he can do. Very young. When their onslaught was over, the Rebels had taken a 34-19 lead with six minutes left in the half. But Duke hadn't come this far to pack it in. The Blue Devils began to look inside. It had worked earlier in the game. And for a while, it worked again. A couple of baskets by Ala Abdelnabi got Duke back on track. But on this night, the Rebels were flying. And no sooner did Duke score than UNLV was dunking at the other end. Comes down into the paint, fires down on the ah! line, very open, a two-hand dunk. Here's Anthony wide open for the... The Rebels were playing as well as they had all tournament long. And when Anthony hit this running jumper right before the half, UNLV took a 12-point lead into the locker room. Actually, trailing by only a dozen should have encouraged Duke, especially since it had basically ignored its own pregame plans and played right into UNLV's hands. I think it's important for us not to erase with UNLV. Uh, rather, us outsmarting them, I think, is something important. Us running good half-court offense. Uh, if we don't take control of the game at some point in that game, we end up getting blown out. Throughout the tournament, Duke had been able to come back from second-half deficits, and now the Blue Devils hoped it could happen once more. But the second half started just as the first had ended. And the first time the Rebels came down court, Larry Johnson hit his first three-pointer of the night. Whips it out, and here's Johnson for a three. Yes! At 50-35, to 35, UNLV had its biggest lead of the night. But Duke fought back, closing the gap to 11, and then found itself exchanging baskets with the Rebels for the first four minutes of the second half. Pass to Henderson, he was lucky to save it, dribbles it out, missed, it goes in. Anthony floating it in, the Butler gets it in, and he lays it in. Early from his own end of court into Leitner, 12-footer, good. Seven points for Leitner, and it's 52-41. Long pass, and going for the basket, layup, good by Hunt. Off anyway, and Davis puts it up and in, dashes it in for the basket. Here's Johnson for another three. Yes. Oh, oh. Ricky trying to drive. Alton turns it. Later, 17-footer straight away. Good. Left side to Hunt. Hunt fakes. Drives to the baseline. 12-footer. Bullseye. Got it. At one point, Duke actually narrowed the UNLV lead to 57-47. But then, all of a sudden, it happened. And Phil Henderson's greatest fears were realized. Actually, it began rather innocently. Larry Johnson made a routine 12-footer. Then Anderson Hunt hit his second three-pointer of the night. But 
back when Stacy Augman led a fast break, which Hunt put the finishing touches on. The Rebels had outscored the Blue Devils 9 to nothing in just over a minute, taking a 19-point lead with 15 minutes left to play. And the running Rebels were only heating up. From the tip off, you could tell it was gonna be a blowout tonight. They were slamming and a jamming and a burning up the floor left and right. There was nothing that could stop them as they drove on down the lane. Fans were going crazy, you could hear them start to scream. I got run in real fever, burning up my mind. I got run in real fever, burning up my mind. I got run in real fever, and it feels so When the Rebels had finished running, they had scored an astounding 18 consecutive points in a little less than three minutes, building an insurmountable 75-47 lead with 13 minutes left as UNLV simply dominated Duke in every aspect of the game. The loss and the manner in which it happened was a bitter pill for Duke to swallow. It had played so well for so long, and now on a night when they had a chance to win it all, the Blue Devils had come up empty. Meanwhile, UNLV came to Denver and found Rocky Mountain Magic. Just counting the seconds off the clock to a national championship. Two seconds, one second. It's a shot at the buzzer, no good. The game is over. Nevada Las Vegas wins the first championship in its history. The NCAA crowd and the Duke Blue Devils once again denied the glass slipper. Nevada Las Vegas 103, Duke 73, and the running Rebels celebrate and whoop it up here in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado, with a...